want to say, if you'll get your prayer card, first of all, uh, I don't even want this series to end. I actually would like to preach on it for the whole year, but that would not be feasible. Uh, this isn't even a message. It's my life. And I would say from the time I was 22, and that's a long time ago because I'm going to be 64 in like five weeks or so. And so that is 42 years ago. And my life would not be what it is. And I'm, I don't feel bad that I'm not the smartest person in the room. I actually feel pretty good about it because I think if you are the smartest person in the room, when you stand before God, you're going to be judged more strictly. But those of us who aren't, we're going to have it a little bit more easy. And I would say that praying the Lord's Prayer has changed my life. And it's given me access to not only God's heart, but his mind. And God is incredibly intelligent. So today we're coming to the end of the Lord's prayer and some of it I'm going to read because I just, I don't want to miss it. And you know, when uh, those Tootsie Roll suckers that when you're a kid, I so did not want to get to the Tootsie Roll. I didn't want to just chew it and get there right away. And I kind of feel the same way with this teaching because it's been my life. And I pray to God that you catch it. Because prayer is caught almost more than it's taught. And you could feel when a person prays in secret or in private. Because there is a quality in their public living. And so it's a prayer pattern into the soul of God. And it's right there. You could look at that. If this is your first time, you could go online. City Church, California, citychurchca.com. And you could download that. You could even take a picture of the QR code. And there's instruction videos in each of these petitions. And as we conclude our series on the Lord's Prayer, this is what I want to ask you this evening. I would ask us to pray these divine words. Words, number one, very slowly. Do not rush through this. And uh, don't try to do it when you're watching television or listening to a podcast. Really settle your mind. I'm just telling you how it worked for me. Settle your mind where you do it slowly, where eat, you, we savor every petition. And I don't know in the South, especially Louisiana, when they're cooking Cajun food and it's really good. We don't want that meal to end. And it's like you, you try to chew it slowly because you want to savor every petition, every word in the nuances that comes from the heart of Jesus. One of my favorite authors, is Madame Guyon. She wrote a book, Discovering the Depths of Jesus Christ. And besides the Bible, that is my favorite book. And, and she says this, when praying the Lord's Prayer in that book, we should be like a bee that goes into the depths of the flower and slowly enjoys the nectar of that flower. She said that is when the believer will experience heaven and God himself. And we really do believe that. So we want to contemplate, meditate, and pray these words. Can you say amen? Now, in this card, on this card, in, in this prayer, Jesus did not, let me tell you what he did not say, and we're going to read it from Luke chapter 11. He did not say only pray this prayer, but all the masters, spiritual masters throughout church history will say every prayer that's in scripture from the prayer that Solomon prayed in Second Chronicles chapter 7 to the prayers that Moses prayed to the prayers that King David prayed in the prophets that every prayer, even the prayers of Paul and Peter of the New Testament, you could find uh, a seed of those prayers in the Lord's prayer. In all the spiritual masters of the ages, they, and I want you to get this, they, the great our father they taught it they lived it and they prayed and believed each of these petitions now there's seven petitions in the lord's prayer the first three are god focus and that's why right here we have the word praise and power then after those three petitions it shifts 
to uh, the hierarchy of our needs. And it begins to have four petitions. And tonight, we're going to end with the last two. I would like you to read this with me. The orange words, these are the petitions. Praise, say it out loud, praise, power, provision, people, presence, priorities, and peace. And we really do believe that. And again, Jesus did not say only pray this. And another thing he did not say, he said, don't be like the heathens. He said this in Matthew 6 when he teaches them to pray the Lord's Prayer. He said, do not be like the pagans or the heathens who by their many words, they kind of just babble it on, recite it, recite it, say it, say it, say it, thinking they will get God's favor and attention. Usually in a pagan world that believed in the gods, they thought their words, if they were many, they could change God or the God's mind. I want to settle something, and we probably should have settled this, the first message, but here we are in the Omega message of this series, the last message. Prayer does not change God. And you should write that on this card. Prayer does not change God. Prayer changes me. God does not need to be changed. He's perfect in all his ways. I need to be transformed and converted. And so prayer changes us. It's not like giving is going to get your uh, God's favor. Speaking many words are going to get God's favor. But God comes through Jesus Christ. We have favor and blessing through him. Can you say amen? And so we love this. And so I want to begin to read Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. And it says, now it came to pass, let's read it together. Now it came to pass, and it's right here on the card if you don't know that. Now, if you are about 40 and older and you have those readers, you may need to look at the screen, all right? Because even with readers, you know, I could kind of do this, but I could read it from the card because I have a contact in, all right? So here we go. Now it came to pass, I'm reading from the card so I could, you could follow my example. And it's Really a good thing in prayer, let me just say this, that you say these words out loud. And if you don't have it committed to memory, just read it. And so here we go. Now it came to pass, let's do it together. As he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples to pray. So he said to them, when you pray, say, just stop right there. When you pray, say, before I was born again and got empowered by the Holy Spirit, I would have never prayed out loud. I was scared to pray out loud. I felt inferior to pray out loud. But when I became born again, filled with the Spirit, I'm telling you, I, when I pray, I say. When I pray, I say. And so I want us to say that again. When you pray, say. Let's do it three times. When you pray, say. When you pray, say. All the kids said. Okay, <laughs> you must be a child. Here it goes. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Please get this. This is where we end uh, the last teaching. I want, we're going to read it together. Then we're going to read it together again. Then we're going to read it together again. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let's do it again. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Last time. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Let me tell you one of the geniuses about this prayer, the great Our Father, that the Lord taught us to pray. I want you to look at your card, pick it up. If you have a pen or a highlighter, I want you to circle these words. After praying this, if it's 42 years and there's not been a day I have not prayed this, and often I was able, many 
many times, more than not, to pray an hour a day. I don't think it's a competition, but you will get lost. And in, in one people say this, well, when all else fails, I'll pray. Or they'll say prayer is a waste of time. That is the most ignorant thing. And that clearly comes from a person who has not prayed. And one of the greatest things that we could do on this earth is to pray because in our prayers, we connect heaven to earth. And I and look, just turn on the television, look at the headlines, earth needs some heaven because they, they, they're doing some really foolish things, okay? And so here we go. I want you to get this. Lord, teach us, underline that word, to pray. They did not say, teach me, as John taught his disciple. He said, when you pray, say, our Father. He didn't say, my Father. He said, our Father. You should underline that or highlight that on the card. Then go to verse 3. It says, give us. He didn't say, give me my paycheck. Where's the money? Show me the money. No, he said, give us day by day our daily bread and forgive us our, underline that, us and our sin. For we also, underline we, also forgive everyone who is indebted to us, underline that, and do not lead us us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one if you want to know real simple in these four verses the main thing is prayer is not just an individual exercise it begins there but people who pray privately they 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 always seek out other people who are praying and there's something powerful jesus said when two or more come together in my name there's a solid Sovereign, manifested presence. That's why I believe probably the greatest service in any church in the world throughout church history is prayer night, not just Sunday morning or when we have service, because that's when we come together and he leads us, he provides for us, he delivers us. The delivery, the provision, and the leading is in the us, not in the me. And one of the problems with these these United States of America is that we're focusing on our individual rights instead of our corporate power as a nation. And we treat the church very similar that the church isn't meeting my needs. If I hear one more time, I'm going to another church. I didn't feel fed. Well, there's a whole Thanksgiving meal in this book. If this isn't feeding you, feed yourself. And for the record, I'm a dealer. When I come to church, I ain't coming to get my stuff. I already have my stuff. I'm coming to deal my stuff. I have Messiah fire. Amen. That's all. Oh, that's dumb. Everyone say our prayer, his power. Say it again. Our prayer, his power. Say it with me in synchronization. Come on. Our his power. Okay, John 17 states, in the second year in uh, Bible college students, best Bible college in the world, we're memorizing this. Last year we memorized it. It states this, those whom you have given me, I have kept in your name. Notice the, peti the petition in the Lord's Prayer did not say, lead me. I want you to look at this where it says presence right here on the back of your card. It said, lead us. Let's read the black together. It says, lead us. Okay, do it again. Lead us. Now what I want us to do, I want us to read these scriptures and I'm going to explain some of this to us. Let's go. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. I just want to stop right there. 
When we read, lead us not into temptation, I want you to stop and begin to ponder with me. God never leads anyone into temptation because the book of James says this, that God is not tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone with evil, but each human is tempted when they're drawn away by their own desires. So God, number one, cannot be tempted by evil. Number two, he does not tempt by evil, but in James, I I do believe, now you need to get this. I do believe that when we pray this part of the prayer, lead us not into temptation, that God gives us the discernment of the Holy Spirit to discern between if it's a trial, which is outward, or a temptation, which is inward. I'm going to say, notice what it did not say. He did not say, lead us not into trial. Because trials are things that happen on the outward and they happen to us. Jesus is not coming to give us a life free of trials, but he is giving us the power to overcome every obstacle that comes our way. And he says, do not let your heart be troubled. I have overcome the world. And if he's overcome the world, you can conquer every trial that comes your way. And how many of you ever prayed right here where it says presence, lead us not into temptation? How many ever prayed, Lord, I can't take it anymore? Have you ever prayed that? I, I, man, I was praying that when Becky was going through a diagnosis, my dog was throwing up, uh, and I'm going, God, I can't take it anymore. I was praying this part of the card, and I heard the Lord say, Jude, you said that yesterday, and you made it. Pray it again, and you'll make it through this day. My grace is sufficient for the day. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough trials in it for you to overcome. Are you with me on that? Let's read the next one. Go to Ephesians 1.20. It's right on the card. Will you, you want to read it out loud? Men, I'm going to give you a break. Ladies online and in the room, read it out loud with me. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. So Jesus is saying, hey, I'm far above all the things that are coming your way in this life. So a trial and a temptation is different. Men, read with me. Ephesians 2, 6. It's shorter. You can do it. And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in, G in Christ Jesus. Good Lord, I should know it by now. Now get this. Jesus is sit seated in heavenly places. And we're seated with Jesus in heavenly places. And if Jesus is far above all rule, all power, all principality and might, so am I. Can you say amen? Now, the best way to handle a trial, I'm not saying a temptation, I'm going to get to that in a moment, is to go right into the presence of God. When Jake was little, we were at this other church. It was a big youth event. I was going to be speaking. They were doing a youth drama before. They had this kid about 6'1", 6'2". He was playing the role of Satan, the devil. He had this fake makeup on, fake blood coming out of his mouth. And Jake, at the age of three, he was Quincy's age, three to four. He didn't understand that it was fake. And he's in the back of the church by the video games. He runs to the front. I'm sitting on the floor in the front. He dives in. He had a pacifier. That's kind of old for a pacifier, but he did. Maybe it was Abishai's age. I'm going to reduce his age. <laughs> <laughs> and I kid you not, he dove into my lap. He took out the pacifier. He goes, I'm scared, Daddy. I'm scared. And I said, don't worry. I'll get that devil. Can I say it right now? The greatest way to overcome a trial, run into 
Jesus, you're seated in heavenly places. Way before you start trying to fight the devil, why don't you go and relax and have a cup of coffee with Jesus? Can you say amen? Everyone say our prayer. Say it again, our prayer. Okay, I want you to get this. This is here. It says in, I love this, Jesus said this. Now, I, this is John 17. He says, now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those you have given me. Why? That they may be one as we are. Please get this. This is when in the world, facing what we face. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. I just want to stop. God has the power to keep you. And I want you to know when you feel like you're falling apart, he's got you. Can I say, if he has the whole universe in the palm of his hand, Jude Fuquay is not a problem. I want you to know when I feel that I am losing it at all ends, I always quote this part. He's able to keep me. He has angels around me that they keep me in all my ways. He has kept me as the apple of his eye. Jesus said, none you have given me, I have lost. I have kept them except the son of perdition that the scriptures might be fulfilled. Look at this verse. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. If you're from California, stop praying to move to Idaho or Texas. Many people, they, oh, they, in California, they don't like God. Oh, California. Will you stop? Jesus is in California. Because if he's not, he wouldn't have me here. Now, you can listen to this. I do not pray that you take Pastor Jude out of California, but that you keep Pastor Jude. Say it. Say it. One more time. Notice what he didn't say from evil. God, keep me from the Republicans. Lord, keep me from the Democrats. Lord, is it going to be Biden? Is it going to be Trump? Oh, Lord, keep me. No, he's not keeping us from the evil that's in the world. He is keeping us from the evil one. Can you say amen? Now, I want you to get this. It does not say deliver them from the government or the state, but from the evil one. I want to read this. I do not want to mess it up. I wrote it specifically for you. When they prayed this petition, lead us not into temptation. Number one, like I said, God does not, he's not tempted, nor does he tempt. But there is a difference for trials by living in this life and you could overcome. In the first century, please hear this, there was a presupposition that before the Messiah would come, there would be a period of testing and trial for the believer. More than a single temptation or trial, it is a prayer that we are not subject or will not be subject to the final test. The apocalyptic language in the New Testament, apocalyptic means the end of the world, the end of time, in the New Testament includes this idea of a final test. The backdrop is that Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, comes into our dysfunctional world and the evil one will begin to attack God, resist God, and resist the church of God and the believers of God. I want you to think. When Christ was getting ready to fulfill his mission of his first time coming to earth, as a human being was to die on a cross. He was born to die on a cross. That all of a sudden, you see, they had a misunderstanding of his purpose. They thought he was going to go and just change the government. And so they're going, Lord, we're with you. We're with you. Even Peter said, Lord, if everybody else denies you, I got you. I'll never deny you. Before the rooster crowed, he denied Jesus three times. They all forsook him. Now listen, 11 of the 12 apostles, they returned. And I am convinced that they began to return because he taught them to pray. And I'm sure when they saw their Lord and Savior, their conquering king nailed to a cross, they were defeated. 
and they were scared. And they thought the government of the time had more power than they did. But I know somewhere in that locked room before the resurrected Christ appeared to them, they're saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, Lord. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God, give us this day our daily bread. Hey, by the way, in the first century, if you were Jewish and you believed in Jesus, the Messiah, you could have lost your business. You were kicked out of the synagogue and you would probably have to go on the streets and beg. And they had no social security. They had no uh, assistance from the government. But let me tell you what they did have. They had a local church. And can I say, I have never known any believer that overcame inward temptations. All of us are tempted. If you you meet anyone who says they're not tempted, they're lying. Diane Sawyer asked Billy Graham, will they ever be a day you're not tempted? He said, oh, Diane, with his Carolina voice, he said, the day I die will be the day I'm not tempted. Every one of us are tempted, but you cannot overcome temptation when you're alone, when you're isolated, when you come to church every six weeks, when you make prayer not a priority but if you have time you will never pray if that's how you go at it can I say it says lead us not into temptation number one I am more holy when I'm around other Christians okay that got an overwhelming applause okay let me look at this side of the room Rick Green's sitting here tonight, and I'm telling you, of all the people in the church, and I'm going to say something, you may have to cover the young gears, but I mean every word I'm getting ready to say. Rick Green scares the hell out of me. <laughs> I really mean, and don't look like you don't have some hell in your lower nature. Everybody has a lower nature. And it wars against our higher nature. And what is the greatest way the lower nature rebels against the higher nature of God? We like to resist. Still to this day, as a pastor who's born again and empowered with the Spirit, if someone like Becky come, babe, I don't like those pants on you. And I say, you should have said the opposite. I'm now wearing them in Jesus' name. <laughs> How many of you just, you, when they tell you, okay, we're asking everyone to give. I'm not giving. He's not going to ask me to give. Why? That resistance is there. And when the, listen to me, don't think it's strange how many people coming out of COVID that are now deconstructing their faith. Why? Because it's the resistance. And I'm telling you, when they said this, lead us not in temptation, deliver us not from evil, but from the evil one, we all need. In fact, I made a commitment. When I was thinking about this, I need to meet with Rick more. Why? Because it says, lead us not into temptation. That, ladies, you come to a women's event beautiful, faithfully. I think you need to begin to kick your husband out of bed and say, you need to go meet with a bunch of men. And I don't care if you pray for two minutes and get on the Harley for 30, but you are going to be led by God, not into temptation, because you have a band of brothers with you praying. Come on. Can you say amen? And, and I want us to get this. Let's read uh, Colossians 1. Uh, 13 and 14. It's right there on the card. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Read this with me. Say, lead us not, lead us not into, temptation, into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, I want you to think, how, did you ever think about this? How did the devil get Judas Iscariot to do what he did? Some say Judas was related to Jesus. These people from Nazareth are like people from South Louisiana. Everybody's a cousin. You marry your cousins. No wonder only a few people were living in Nazareth. And they say, can any good thing come out of South, I mean, Nazareth, South Louisiana? How did Judas do that? I've thought about that often. Let's think of this prayer, our Father who is in heaven. 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. I'm telling you right now, number one, he saw God as God, only powerful, only wanting to overcome Rome and not be the father of his heart. Jesus didn't say when you approach God, O powerful God of Israel, our father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Meaning you can't make God's name holy because God's holy. His name is him and he's his name. It means you value his name. Do you value the name of God more than you value your business, your destiny, your car, your house, your relationship? This is not just a song. The sweetest name I know, and I know Becky would say this too, is Jesus. Jesus. When I'm scared at the age of almost 64, like a big baby, I'm like Jake running to the Father when I get scared. Two names I call. Number one, Jesus, help me. Becky, where are you? No. (laughs) It's a whisper to Jesus further, Jesus. Becky! How about this one? Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. He stopped that. He started praying with the first Adam prayed, no, my will be done. Then you begin to think, give us this daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Then this next part, lead us not to temptation. I honestly believe this. Follow me. Eleven of the men returned to Jesus. Remember what he said to Peter? I'm going back to Judas. Don't think I'm skipping out on him. Peter denied Jesus how many times? Let's do it in Italian. Una, due, tre. Spanish, uno, dos, tres. English, one, two, three. What did Jesus do? He gave him inner healing. Peter, do you love me? For you know. Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Lord, come on, you know. You know I love you. Third time, Peter, do you love me? He said, when you were younger, you made your own decision. Some of you in this year, as you pray this prayer, your life is going to change. You have a call on your life. You know how many times it's a called person, I want to say, I just want to be, I, I, I just want to live a normal life. I, I, don't, I don't want to be involved in people's lives anymore. I, just, I, I want to isolate. Isolation is one of the greatest, most damaging costs to faith. And if COVID did anything to our nation and the nations of the world, What did the devil do? He isolated. What is different? All the 12 denied him. But 11 remembered our Father. Give us day by day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation. But they began to realize this isn't Pilate. This isn't Rome. It's not the American government. Can we really go out on a limb and say it's not Ukraine, Russia, Hamas, or Israel? There is a evil one who hates our God, hates his people, hates his church. In the end of time, they'll call him the Antichrist, the false prophet, the beast. And can I say we overcome him? Because Jesus Christ has already overcome him. Well, why aren't we in victory? Eleven went to a room. Can I say Thursday night is going to be our room? Where we change our lives, our family, our neighborhood, our jobs, our area, and most of all, our generation. Judas, where was he? I don't know what sin you've committed already. Usually when a new year starts, we have all these new year's resolutions. And by February 1st, we've already not kept one. Come on, I started this fast all water. That ended the first meal. (laughs) Am I the only one? I did not gain weight on this fast, so I have in past years. (laughs) When half the church goes, did you fast? It looks like you got bigger. It's like your mother. I told you I'm still tempted. You slap me, I'm going to slap your mom. 
I'm from Louisiana. You call me ugly, I'm going to go say your mother's ugly. Come on. I, come on, deliver us. Don't judge me. You're, you're supposed to be with me. Let me tell you something. Sir, I want to talk to someone who has sinned a sin that you think it's not forgivable. Did you read Father, John 17? We're getting it to memory. All that you have given me, I have kept in your name, except the son of perdition. Why? Because the son of perdition resisted the final temptation. It's never how you start. It's how you finish a race. Football games, you say, who do you want in the Super Bowl? Okay. 49ers, San Francisco. <laughs> no one from this side. You guys do live in California. You do not live in Dallas. I know who likes the Cowboys. I want the 49ers and the Chiefs, and I want the 49ers to beat the Chiefs like a Louisiana tail beating. No, I don't want them to beat him in a California veggie timeout. I mean a Louisiana, I'm a spank you until you cry. Amen? Now watch, watch. Ladies and gentlemen, do not go through phony psychotherapy. And I'm not against counseling. I'm a proponent of it. And I was seven years. I'll go to counseling. I'll do any, try anything. But can I say any counseling that's void of God has no power to set you free from the evil one. You may be set free from the evil of a pattern of your family's curses or dysfunction, but you will not be set free from the evil one because you need the Holy One who's already defeated the evil one, who resisted the evil one in the wilderness, in the garden, on the cross, under mockery, under beating, under pain, under, come on, the weight of sin, under rejection. No! If he kept me, he's going to keep keeping me. And I just want to say, I think as this time gets darker, it'll be darker out there. Don't be shocked about that. But guess what? The darker it gets out there, the lighter it is going to be in here. And I want to put something before us. If you have children and grandchildren, now is not the time to go to church every six weeks. And if you're sick or you have a, a compromise in your body, online's for you, okay? However, if you're stuck at home and you're falling back into old patterns that you have been free for for 10 years, I would say I'd rather be free and believe God to protect me and come and worship with the house of believers. Come on. Let's go back to Judas. Oh, yeah, he felt bad. Feeling bad is not repentance. Oh, I feel bad. I feel bad. I feel bad. Never forget one person I had met, they were having nosebleeds. And they, they would say this, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Why do I feel so bad? For two weeks straight with the nosebleeds, the neighbor was telling me that. Finally, my Christian self couldn't take it anymore. I said, you know why you feel bad? They go, why? Because you are bad. You are bad to the core. I said, everyone on the earth, the world's got it wrong. Everybody's good. No, have a two-year-old, you'll know how bad we are. Mine, 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 mine. You know what hell's word is? Mine, 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 mine. No, devil, it's mine. Are you with me? I think we need to be like my John when he was two. A little scrappy kid came and took the Tonka truck in City Kids. John goes, mine. The scrappy kid, no, mine. On the third time, John got that truck, hit that kid over the head, go, mine, <laughs> and walked off. Can I say, no, my life belongs to God and me, and the devil's not leading me, the devil's not uh, driving me. God leads us, the devil drives us. 
Listen to this. Judas felt bad about what he did. That is not enough power to make you convert. You have to repent. And I love this. Let's read these statements together and then we'll end. Our Father, up together, out loud. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive others who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Stop right there. I will not be like Judas thinking this deliverance is going to be just a political party. And let me say, America needs a different party. I, I, I think we may need an independent party. We need to mix some things up. And I'm not here to preach politics. I'm here to do this. I have not lived that. I have lived this. And I'm saying we are living in the end of time. And we need a corporate deliverance. Not from governments, but from hell who's trying to stop Jesus Christ from coming back again. Can you say amen? And I want you to read this last one. For yours is the... And the, and the, let's do it louder. For yours is the, and the, and the, let's do it one more time. For yours is the, the kingdom of God. If there's one word that I can tell you, when you meet, the Lord Jesus. Now, I, I, this is where we're in, but I have to settle this. Many people, they promote this. Accept Jesus and you will be saved. It never said whoever calls on the name of the Savior, who calls on the name of the healer, who calls on the name of the gift giver, who calls on the name of the peacemaker, who calls on the name of the shepherd. You know what it says? Whoever calls on the name of somebody better read the Bible. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. There were two thieves on a cross. One cursed. The other one said, we deserve what we're getting. It's our just penalty. This man is innocent. And that murderer and thief looked at Jesus, and this is all he said, Lord, remember me. Lord, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be, will be saved. Lord, remember me, Jesus said today. Bam, you're with me in paradise. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Listen to this in one word. Kingdom, I would say, if you want to know a word in English that would really depict that, it's the king's rule, his authority. But I would say this, order. What changed in me when I met Jesus as Lord, not just as Savior? The order of my life changed. The order of the life changed. Number one, I was no more in the driver's seat. He took the car keys away. I called shotgun. And he started driving my life. In heaven, no one con is contentious or resists God the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit, the three in one. The angels, those who resisted, were kicked out. They're demons. They're fallen angel. There's an order, and he's the most high God. Then angels, then the saints. And this is one of the things I love that I love that I love. They said this throughout the ages. It says this, may our voices be one with theirs. Can I say when we sing the song that they wrote, this is our confession your voice is joined and my voice is joined with angels. The young woman singing tonight 
Steve, Steve has healing in his voice. When he sings, I'm telling you, something erupts out of me. It's better than any concert I've been to. I've been to the Commodores. That was good. No music like the 80s. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Play that funky music. That was good. Casey and the Sunshine Band. None of them. And I love Whitney. No one can sing like Whitney. The angels can. But when Steve sings, I feel healing. It says, may our voices be one with theirs. Can I tell you, when I shout and erupt, I can't keep quiet because heaven is surrounding us. I want to give you this scripture. Are you struggling? Are you struggling? Do you live one way when you're at this meeting or in church and another way when you're away? Then you need to be led by God and other believers and scriptures in the Holy Spirit to overcome trials and resist temptation. Another one, you can be delivered from the final resistance. Always know when you're being pushed to deny in the smallest way, nonverbal way, lifestyle way, the enemy's trying to get us to that final point of separating from God. But this prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Why? For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. And we're going to get to amen in a minute. The devil has a kingdom and his kingdom is confusing. You know, we're hearing a lot of this word and I, I feel it. I don't know if you do. You feel chaos and confusion in our nation. And even in the world, God is not the author of confusion. When God is not in charge of the people, the leaders can't be in charge of the people. Our founding father said these people, it will be impossible for them to govern themselves without God. We need God. Amen. There's a kingdom of the world. But you know what? I'm believing. City Church, California. I want you to stand with me. Will you get this card? And this is what it says, and I want us to read these verses. We're ending, sorry. We usually end a little bit sooner. I know. It's okay. It says Matthew 6, but read it out loud. But seek first. Wait, we'll start. You're waking up. But seek first the and his and all these things shall be added to you. Psalms, one of my favorite scriptures. St. Benedict, the founder of the monastic movement, built it on this verse. Verse 4. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I see, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Everyone say, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever 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 in the kingdoms of this world from microsoft to amazon from the himalayas to the rockies from the sea to the shining sea the kingdoms of this world are becoming the kingdoms of our God and His Christ and our Lord. And not He, we will reign forever and ever and ever. Amen. This read the amen. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer in the ministry of the word. Evening and morning at noon, I will pray and cry aloud. He shall hear my voice. Read the next one, Psalms 109. In return for my love, they are my accusers, but I will give myself to prayer. And also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Come on, and I will give you the keys. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Everyone say amen. 
Say amen. I want you to put your hands out. And Pastor Steve, in a moment, is going to come and end this. I come now and I say amen. I don't just say amen to a prayer at a meal. I do not say amen to a sermon at the end. We say amen with all of heaven that this thing called living and life and history and world, it is going to go God's way. And we will stand and we are surrounded, feel this right now by a great cloud of witnesses. Our voices join with the communion of the saints. Becky's father's there. My aunt Cookie's there. My aunt Jerry's there. Think of someone you know who is a believer and they are there. It's a great stand. And since we're surrounded by this, them. We throw off parasitical sins that try to take the life of God out of us. And we say, Amen. I cover this church and I say, You are now enveloped by a circle of peace. In the days of adversity, you will have calm, you will have peace, you will have a spirit of peace. You will not be running here or there, you will be seated and steady in the presence of Jesus Christ and you will know victory. I command peace over you. Now just feel that. Peace not as the world gives. The world can only give you peace when everything goes right. I stand before you. I know how to have peace when all hell breaks loose. I command peace. I command peace in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. One last time, let's say it together. Get your card. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sins as we forgive others who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us, but deliver us, but deliver us, but deliver us, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a shout and a hand clap.